Welcome back to the Halftime Report here on the SDH Network, presented by Kaiser Permanente. Kaiser Permanente, for all that is you, Madison Cruz, Jared Smith, and alongside all of us, our special guests will finally tell you. We've been holding off for a while, but here we are. We're with Daniel Russo, who is defender for Atlanta United, too. Danny, how you doing? I'm doing well, guys. Thank you for having me on the show. Awesome. I mean, first question as well, obviously, you were out with the season with an ACL. How has your recovery been so far? Honestly, it's, it's been amazing. I, I don't think I could have ended up in a better place to have this happen. Atlanta's been treating me so well just with the, uh, with the trainers in terms of really just doing everything they can to help me get back out there. Mental support as well is such a huge thing that I think for a lot of players don't realize how important it is. So that's something that's been huge for me as well. And just, I mean, I'm surrounded by the best technology, everything. So it doesn't get much better than, than this place to be. And you, you've also been around the club as well, being around teammates, Javier Armas. You've been around everyone else. You're at every twos game. Kind of having that support, being there in the stands, supporting the side. I mean, how important is it to have that balance of being there for your teammates even when you're not on the field and having that support? Yeah, for sure. I think it's, I think it's one of the most important things. I mean, something I learned from college was that some of the most important people were the guys that never saw the field for a minute. You know, they just they brought some so much energy to the locker room, brought just that morale that, you know, when you're kind of in the game, you get locked in a little bit and you don't really might not have that energy. But to have outside guys bring that energy, bring the momentum, you know, and get the guys fired up a little bit. It's it's honestly one of the best feelings as a player to have somebody like that. Now, you've been in the stands, got the chance to see a little bit of outside instead of being on the field. What has it been like for you getting to watch some of these last couple of matches with the two, seeing how they've done so far and being on the other side of it for the most part? Yeah, no, I mean, it's definitely a great experience for me, especially how I've come in here from college kind of playing a new position. I still now I get to do more on the watching side and learning and seeing especially the guys who are in my spot, but also just watching. I mean, it's just amazing. I, I enjoy it as much as I do playing. I, I mean, obviously, I'd rather be out there, but from being on the sidelines, it's just fun to watch these guys play. And, you know, right now we're on a two winning streak. Hopefully we take home the win tonight and that would uh, that would really be a good end of the season, start to the end of the season. So a little bit of a different scenario. You're up here in the booth with us and you're not you know, on the field. Is it a different feeling for you right now? What are you feeling right now in this moment? It's awesome. I, I love being up here. I think the best place to watch a game, honestly, if I go to a, a stadium is I try to watch from the top deck anytime. You know, I mean, it's just the best place to watch a game, to see everything and to be up here. I, I really do uh, enjoy this because I get to appreciate the work that you guys do off the field. So this has been awesome just to see what you guys are doing. I got in here for the last couple minutes and a half, so I got to watch some of the commentating going on and he did quite an amazing job. <laughs> John Nelson over what? here. <laughs> you gotta love it. Hey, we're we're in a full room right now. Hot mics everywhere. We're hanging out. Yep. <laughs> All right, Jared, what you got? Uh, yeah, Danny, I want to ask you about you know that that first forty five minutes for you watching it from up here. Um, just your general thoughts on just the team's energy, especially all on a two game winning yeah. streak coming out against a tough team like this. No, I think it's been great so far. I mean, to be honest, we we have a lot of first team guys right now, so you can kind of see the little bit of the difference. It's, it's been really good. Um, a quick turn of events, to be honest. It was, you know, goal, then we scored right back, and red card, or red card, then we score. So it's been a quick turn of events, and I just want to congratulate Caden Moore on his first goal. So it's been pretty awesome to see some of the younger guys be able to put that out there. Yeah, I know you talked about the guys who can come in and you can kind of be a mentor coming out of college with. How has it been where you seeing some of these academy kids who are 15, 16 years old training with you guys and being that kind of mentor with them because you are a bit more worldly having seen yeah. so much? No, I think it's amazing. I, I tell all these kids all the time who are debating whether to go to college, try to sign that contract. Obviously, signing a contract is awesome, but in my experience, I probably wasn't ready to sign a contract at 17, 16 even alone. So going to college for me has been one of the best experiences. I've learned so much about, uh, more even off the field just about being a person, how to treat people, how to react when things don't go your way on the field, and not really making soccer my identity and making it when something goes wrong in soccer, the rest of my day is ruined, you know, and I think... For a lot of these kids, that, that's something that I want to be able to teach them is that there's other things that you can do to really kind of bring up that morale when things aren't going well because soccer is not always going to go your way. Yeah, I know you do a lot of rehab, getting your knee back in shape, getting mentally. I know you talked about that, and we've stressed that in the past, the mentality of getting back in shape and being able to trust your body again to do things. How has it been for you off the field? It, I know when you're not doing rehab, but watching the game and kind of building that IQ, maybe talking to coaches, talking to guys like, yeah. hey, guys, I saw this last time from my vantage point, which you might not have seen, and being able to kind of be another set of eyes and another voice. Yeah, for sure. I, I definitely love being able to talk to guys after the games. You know, they, they play, you know, some guys maybe might ask for an opinion or I go up to them and just kind of give them a little bit of my feedback, being able to tell them what I saw from the out perspective, especially sometimes at halftime, I'll go in there and be like, hey, there was space here or there, like try to exploit that, try to do that. But um, to be honest, it's it's great the position I am in. I can use it to be able to help others, obviously, and that's what I want to do, especially with these younger guys. So, 
One thing I do want to ask, I, we talked a little bit to Javi a bit about it a while ago. You guys did start your own podcast. How did yeah. that come together yeah. for you guys and kind of seeing that a little bit and really piecing that together with both of you? Yeah, I mean, it was it was just one of those ideas. Like, I think we met each other and within a week we became best friends. It was like we had met each other for the first time. I mean, we played each other in the College Cup last fall, so Notre Dame versus Oregon State in the semifinal, um, and we didn't know each other at all. It was just a weird coincidence that we ended up being roommates and living together. So within a week we became best friends. We, we started just thinking of ideas that we could do, and we're like, oh, this would be a great idea. Let's just do it for fun. And we started the YouTube channel. Uh, uh, our families were encouraging us because they thought it was funny. So we just decided to do it for fun, and it's been great, honestly. It's fun, you know. We, we definitely need to keep on doing more work with it because I think people enjoy it, especially I know younger kids from my hometown. They love watching that kind of stuff and just being able to see what it's like, you know, the journey that I've been on. And Javi being a, a foreigner, it's cool to see how his journey to get to college to the U.S. So we kind of have different perspectives. So it's awesome to be able to put those two together and be able to help people in all different ways. I want to ask you about the next 45 for this game. You, you've been in a number of games in your career and in your life. You're up a man, but it's a tied game. How do you maintain that aggression, but not so recklessly aggressive that you get punished when trying to get forward up a man? Yeah, I think a big thing right now would just be keeping the ball. I think we need to tire them out as much as we can because, you know, being down a man, I know that feeling, and it's just it's, it's mentally draining to have to run for 45 when you're down a man because you feel like you're doing three times the amount of work. And I think right now they're probably going to start to sit back this half just because they're going to play for the tie. You know, they're not losing right now, so they don't have to go for it. So I think they're going to try to play for the tie. So for us, I think the best thing we can do is really just honestly keep the ball, keep the pressure on them, keep it moving. And I think we could look to play over the top a little bit and try to get some runs in behind. Absolutely. Well, we'll be right back here on the SDH Network. We're going to come back. We'll bring you some first half stats, and then we'll go over some scores around the league, get you knowing on what's happening around MLS Next Row. Stick and stay. We'll be right back.